Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, uh, uh, just want to show you uh, some quick tests that I did uh, with baking, trying to understand exactly how it works uh, with both solid and non-solid models, um, as well as some of the actual specific details of the baking settings and substance designers. So here, what I'm trying to do is I'm obviously uh, I got a brain fart. And I'm trying to struggle to figure out how to draw a uh, the letter T and see how I'm stretching and that doesn't work. Of course it doesn't work. And then, oh yeah, I'll just grab one of these lines. <laughs> I'll use my vertex tools and I forget to hold the option key down and, or I do hold the option, or I forget to hold the option key down. It doesn't draw it out there. So anyway, it's obvious that all you gotta do is draw another rectangle and mirror it over. And that's what I end up doing here. Uh, so I just wasted about 20 seconds of both of our times even talking about that. So anyway, <laughs> moving forward. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm creating a T, uh, uh, because the T will actually be, um, it's a little bit more difficult to get inside and outside in terms of creating the, uh, the, uh, bounding areas. So, uh, or, or the actual, the actual, uh, baking areas. So what I've done is I've taken that, I've used the artisan tools, uh, uh, to sub, to, uh, basically subdivide it, uh, turn off all the coplanes. And one of the interesting things is that when you're going to bake textures, what it really boils down to, uh, when you're baking normals on there, it really doesn't matter if things are sub, if things are smoothed or not, because whatever the geometry is is going to be overridden by the normals that you generate when you bake. So uh, that's an interesting thought, you know. So you don't have to worry about whether you're showing these lines or not. It has nothing to do with the final outcome as long as you're going through this this uh, voxel ba baking process. Okay, so we just export this as an OBJ. We'll open it up now in 3D Coat. Uh, and uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to basically UV map it. 3D Code's got an excellent auto UV mapping tool. Um, uh, it generally does a pretty good job. There's a couple, I have a couple videos on it if you want to take a look at it, but generally there's nothing you have to do with it other than just let it auto map. Now, when I go into here, of course, I always say no center snap because I want to make sure that it loads it in the exact same spot it's supposed to so that if I ever have more models and I want to apply them also, I can do that. They'll always uh, they'll be uh, positioned relative to each other. So here's our UV maps. You look at they look pretty good. So all we're going to do is uh, export these. I use a none preset so it doesn't export any texture maps. I'm going to call this the untitled uh, and I call, call it untitled UVs because now it's the same object. Before, uh, SketchUp doesn't export with UVs. Now it does have UVs. So there we have it. So the next thing we want to do is uh, we are going to create, um, uh, we're going to import this model uh, directly into 3D Coat and uh, voxelize it. So we'll go in here, New, and we're not going to save this. We don't need to save this as a 3D Coat file. We'll go to Voxel, uh, uh, the Sculpt Studio, and what we're importing without voxelization and as a surface, hit the S button and we apply it and we want to keep it in the same location. You can see it's not very uh, well resolved at that point. Uh, what I did is I hit the enter key and then I typed in the default was 20,000 polygons. So you can see now that we have 20,000 polygons on here. Now, uh, uh, now I'm, I'm going to struggle again a little bit here, try to get an extrude on that surface. And I realize I got to go to top view and turn off perspective. And then I just need to draw, draw my uh, rectangle, and uh, and you can see that it, it actually works pretty good. It's a little little tall. Uh, so what I've decided now is that let's go ahead and turn on symmetry so we can get this all right. Um, go into symmetry, uh, turn it on. You know you can see these little planes show up when you click. So we have uh, we want to have that, and we also want to have the the Vertical symmetry, that one, but uh oh, but it's at the bottom. So if we say pick from the bound box down below, it's going to center that. So then we're in good shape. So uh, now we're going to go back in and uh, I'm going to grab, instead of the square, let's use a circle. And the circle here, uh, uh, it basically I'm trying to make it a little bit so it's not so intense. The, the, the width of that circle makes no difference, right? So that can be small or big because I have to draw it. Here I'm trying to tap it doesn't work. Uh, of course, my, my symmetry has already been locked. Once you, the first time you draw it, it's going to lock it to the bounds of the actual surface. So I've done that. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and drag this out and you can see, okay, there it is. That worked out pretty good. 
uh, except I need to be in the plan view. So let's snap to the plan view and let's go ahead and let's drag out a few of these. Let's actually let's increase the resolution here. So now we've got about 3009 polygons. I hit that button twice. And as we can see that, uh, there we go. We're going to start drawing on here as soon as I figure out what I'm doing. And, uh, just turn on the cast shadows. It's got a little better, better picture. So, okay. So this is where we're at. I was going to do that, and let's just start drawing these. Let's start drawing some of these. This this cast shadows is a really nice thing. The only problem with it is you can't adjust the direction in which the shadows are facing. So uh, that I'm aware of. There may be a way to do it, but I'm not aware of anyway. So here I'm I'm just drawing a few of these. You can still see that I've got a little bit of artifacting there on the side there on that one. Um, and what I can do is uh, go to the invert tool and I'm going to actually start putting some holes in it now. So you can see. So we can, so we're basically going in and out of this object. So I'll build kind of a little Lego toy sculpture of some kind that's going to be good for us to test. Okay. So this is a solid object. Uh, let's go ahead now. If, as you can see, it's already got quite a bit, a little bit of artifacting. I'm just going to go ahead and hit a smooth all. Yeah, I'll jack it up like, like that. That looks pretty good. And uh, if you can see down the bottom, we have this 309,376. So if I go to decimate that, it's going to tell us that there's the number and we want to reduce it. Eh, I'm not going to reduce it because that's plenty. That, that's good size for, for a, uh, uh, baking model. So let's go ahead and save this one as untitled. And we're going to call this high because it's a high number of polys, right? So there we go. So don't, don't, uh, reduce it any, let's make it zero. Okay. So there we have it. So next we're going to do is we're going to open up uh, substance designer and, uh, what we'll do is we'll bake, um, uh, bake the model. So let's open up the first model, which is going to be our UV mapped up model, right? So there it is right there. There it is UV. And we say, okay. And it comes in, you can see there's our, our T. Now we want to put on top of that model, we're going to put, we're going to bake the, uh, uh, the high poly model when we just created. So let's go to that and let's move, uh, let's turn off, uh, the, uh, actually let's, let's, uh, adjust the frontal distance to something like about 0.25. It sounds like a good number. 0.25. I'm just guessing, and I'll, uh, we're going to try a higher number here in a second. So, so uh, what we do is we turn off the IDs because we don't need those right now. We're hitting the bake, and when we hit the bake, we'll see that that's our baked. That's what we have for baking, and you can see that it's pretty good. There's a little bit of, of uh, parallax distortion there. Um, I'm not sure if there's a way to fix that or not, uh, but there is a little bit of parallax distortion. But those are pretty deep. Uh, deep textures, deeper than normal. But as you can see that we get both, we get all the inside and all the outside, it looks like on this. So that looks pretty good. Um, uh, now that we've done that, let's try it again. Let's just delete all these. And let's try and, and do the same bake with, uh, let's try jacking it up to point, it's around 0.5. So we'll get around, around there and see if it makes any difference, right? So Okay, hit the bake front color texture. It's going to bake. These are small maps, by the way. These are 512. Typically, I'll bake it 2K because uh, it's going to be a little clear uh, picture. But you can see it's a pretty, uh, uh, a pretty nice. Uh, again, you know, we only have a few polygons in this thing, and it's pr it's pretty darn nice the way it's laid. It's it's laid out. So I'm happy about that. So uh, let's go ahead now and uh, actually let's let's undo let's, uh, all right, uh, let's undo all that. Because what I want to do is I want to take that five, that bit, that one we just did, and uh, I want to uh, take a screen capture of this. It's a little tool I use. It looks like the cursor gets lost here, but so let's try it again. Here we go. Okay, so we'll grab that, and there's a the screen capture. Let's move it off to the side, and let's go ahead now and clear all these out and let's do another last bake and this bake we're going to use very low settings right so I want to see what happens when I go way down I'm going to go down to like 0 0.185 0 0.185 0 0.185 0 0.185 0 0.185 0 0.185 0 0.185 0 0.185 0 0.185 0 0.185 0 0.185 0 0.185 0 0.185
0.185. So those are kind of low. And we let this bake. And now I'm going to show you the other. And you'll see that it's virtually identical. So those settings did not really change anything that I can tell. Um, you know, it's just, it's kind of the same thing. We're looking at the same thing. So anyway, uh, that's good to know. So those, that 0.185 was a pretty decent setting there that got us, got us going well. Now the next thing I want to try is I want to basically come in here and I'm going to uh, delete. Oops, that's not going to work. I got it. So that's interesting. I selected those. I delete them, but I have to shift group them. I'm group them first. Once I've grouped them, then I can delete them. And I'll, I'll get that all without having to delete the rest of that stuff. So now that that's done, I can go ahead and export in the 3D model. Um, as in this case, I'm going to call it a uh, uh, untitled hollow. And so now we have a hollow one, a hollow object. And again, we're going to have to UV map that. We can't just we have to go in, and go into uh, our object and grab it and do use the same settings as we did in the previous one which is uh, now the no center snap okay let's look at the uvs there it is see it's hollow on the inside uh, and there are uvs they look good and we just have to export the objects again and we'll call this one the hollow with uv So what I'm trying to do, understand is that what's going to happen, this is not a solid model. What's going to happen when I use that other solid model that I've already created and I want to bake it on top of this, what's going to happen? Will it actually work? And that's the goal because I know in a lot of uh, modeling for games, you don't want to show those back faces. You want to get rid of them. But what happens when you try and bake something on that already had the back faces, what's going to happen? So there's our model. It's a uh, hollow in the back. Let's go ahead and add our, our same uh, hot... Oops, that's not the right one. The high object. And let's set the, uh, the frontal to 185, the small one that we had before. Let's turn off the uh, ID and let's bake it and see what happens. And there you go. So look, looks like it worked out pretty good. Let's look around. You can see underneath it nothing underneath it so that worked great so that's a really good thing that we learned here is that we don't need to have baking uh, uh, we don't need to have our, our models uh, fully solid to be baked thanks for watching